Okie dokie. All right, since both of you have Macs, we're going to do Safari for the Mac first. Okay. So, Safari for the Mac and Safari for iOS look slightly different, but just like everything else, they interact completely. So, you have the option to have all your soon passwords, but for now, your bookmarks and things like that go between the two, but there's some other neat features. So, First, let's go through preferences so we don't forget them. If you go up to your Apple, or if you go up to Safari, and come down to Preferences, click on Generals, the first one. Now, your default web browser should be Safari. Some may have it set as Firefox or something else. So just verify you have Safari. Yes? OK, yes? No, the first one, it wouldn't be Google, it could be Chrome. No, 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 I use Safari. I use Safari. There you go. Go up to the word Safari and come down to preferences. Click on general. Great. So, that's what you want, but if you had an alternate browser, you could put it on there, but you don't want this. In other words, what the default browser means is, when somebody emails you a link, that's when you click on it, that's the browser that fires up. And you want Safari, because it's our best, best browser, and it's a real great browser now. So the next one is Search Engine. Google is the best. They've just improved their algorithm, but you do have the option of using Yahoo and Bing. Okay? Yahoo, I'm right now, Google's the best. And by the way, Yahoo uses Bing. So when Safari opens, you can open it in a new window or tell it to open all windows from last session. Which way is yours, guys, by default? Home page? Or, no, Safari opens with a new window. Is that what it says? Oh, you says home page. Okay, that's fine. Click on the home page. So there's your other thing, top side. So you guys have a few more choices in that view. That's not yeah. Safari. It's new windows. Open. Yeah, that's okay. You're, you're good. So new tabs open with top sites is good. And then the home page. Now, what is your set for your home page? And yours? Okay, live page from Apple. So, this is where you set what you want when you first go to your browser to go to. And the way, the best way to do that is you navigate. Yours is Google search, which is fine. Yeah. And Apple start page is good, or you could have a news page or something like that. Please, please, please don't ever make it be Yahoo's homepage because there's so much garbage that goes on behind the scenes, your computer will slow down. So, remove history items. When you go to links, have you ever noticed, let's see if I can do a Google search, what's my most recent Google searches? Uh, let's see, uh, Machu Picchu. Okay, Machu Picchu was a recent look for me. So, notice here when I go to the Google search page, all of these are blue, but in fact this one is purple. Do you know what that signifies? That means I've, in the last year, clicked there. So it's telling me which pages did I visit. I visited this one. Okay? 
Does that make sense? It remembers it. Let me go ahead and click on the next one down, Machu Picchu. And now when I go back to this page, you'll notice it shows I visited it. This helps you when you're going back and saying, did I click on this one or not click on it? And if I go to my Safari preferences, here's where it is, remove history items. A lot of times these used to be set by a, to a month. You can set this whatever you want. How is yours by default? One year. One year. Okay. So it says I visited that page before. That's all that is. And it's your browser history. So if you have something you don't really want people to know you browsed at, you could delete it. There's a whole nother setting in Safari we can do in a minute. So remember we talked in mail how we download our files to the downloads folder? Safari used to load it to your desktop. You should say save uh, downloads to downloads folder, does it? No, and I tried to change mine's desktop. I had to change it now. Um, Let's see. Okay, so you can change it to Oh, it's asking you where. Click, uh, click on Kathy Wayne on the left. This one? Yeah. Now click on Downloads. Now click Select and Download. So now you've chosen. In other words, you went to the top. Click Group Downloads manually. So is that one of those things on my desktop? Yes. So now they won't be. Now they're going to a Downloads folder. So the other thing is, is your downloads folder sometimes gets full of stuff. Well, you know what? Most of the time you've already dealt with it, so you can go into your downloads folder and purge it if you want to. Because if it's something you downloaded, you could probably go get it again. But don't worry about it unless you're low on space. Open save files after downloading. That's a, do you guys have that one checked? That's good. That just means, that, hey, it's a safe file. Let's go ahead and open it. Bookmarks. Do you have the same selection I have here? That could. You don't really, it doesn't really help that much. It's only if, like, for instance, if you had EmpowerMac.com in my contacts, it would help with that. But not a huge deal. What's Bonjour? Bonjour is... So right now, if we all fired up messages, Apple messages, the old iChat, we're on the same network, so we would see each other. That's bonjour. What officially it is is zero config networking is what they call it. So in other words, we didn't have to configure anything. We could share things back and forth. They don't allow it with their router here, but we would be within our network. If you have two Macs at your house or three Macs, you could interact from one to another that way with voice, text, video, or, sh or sharing files. Bonjour is kind of not used that much anymore. So again, just the top, the three things I have selected here is what you want. Tabs. So, open page and tabs instead of windows is your set for automatically. Automatically. And below that is good. So, let's talk about tab browsing. You saying, do you use tab browsing now? Do you use tab browsing? No, isn't that that thing? Oh, man. Now? This is the best thing since sliced bread. I don't know the difference between that and the window. Great, great, great. So, I have a page open. I have all these Machu Picchu things over here. Or let's say we were at Apple Pie Recipes. Here's a good one. Apple pie recipes. Okay, so I got a list of apple pie recipes, right? Forget that I visited these. So why don't you guys do that? Go Google apple pie recipes. Just send it in your top search bar, type in apple pie recipes. Return her in. What you got? Return her in. You got it. Okay, so you got this Google list. Now, don't do what I'm going to do here, but inevitably, 
The old way is you'd click here, wait for it to load, and go, oh, yeah, okay, that's not the one I wanted, and you click the back arrow, and you keep going back and forth. Take your left hand. Hold it up. Say, Steve John. <laughs> Take your index finger and put it on your command key. It's on either side of your keyboard. Is your mouse on your left or your right? Are you using trackpad? Trackpad, okay. You're using a mouse. It's on your right, right? So use your left hand. Hold command now. Now, click on the first, while holding command down, the Apple key, click on the first one. Did you get a little extra folder tab open up behind the scenes here? Let go. Sure enough, look, you got some. In fact, you did it twice. That's okay. I don't see things. Oh. Right up here. See these little yeah, folder tabs? Yeah. Think yeah. about these like vanilla folders. Yeah. Okay. So, you've got them right here. You can do it a bunch of times. Oh. It's working. Yeah. It's very subtle and it's behind it's the scenes. Subtle. But, Let's take that one step further. Let's go to the second one and hook, oh, hold down command and click one time. And you'll notice a second tab opened up. Okay? Don't keep clicking a bunch of times. And now you should, now all I do is here I have my main page. And then I click on here. Oh, there was the first one. Oh, there was the second one. But I haven't upset my original page. Okay? Now, both of you opened up one too many. It doesn't work on that. No, it, it didn't work on So, um, command click. The, the keyboard command is command click. Now, if I see a tab up there and I want to get rid of it, I can do one of two things. If you look on the screen, you'll notice I'm on the first tab, but if I hover over either other tab, look what happens, a little X comes up. So you had, one, you had a couple tabs open too many, you had a couple tabs too many, so hover over the X and just click the X. Just one, because you had a bunch of them. So you just click it. Yeah. And that gets rid of the tabs. Because you had extra. So you don't have to be on the tab to get rid of it. So Kathy's question was, what's the difference between tab browsing and, or tabs or new windows? Yeah. So if I go up to file, well, actually, Let's take this back. I'm going to go back to one tab here. And here I searched for, uh, so I'm, I'm back to one tab because I closed all my others. But let's say instead of searching for apple pie recipes, I want to get pecan pie recipes also. So if I go up to file, new tab, or what's the keyboard shortcut for that? Command T. It opens a brand new tab. You'll notice my other Google search is still here. And now I can type or dictate pecan pie recipe. And now that new tab opened up a whole different search and I can go back and forth. There's my apple pie search and there's me my pecan pie search. And I can still hit command click to open new tabs. Tab browsing is huge. But the counter to that is if we do new windows. But watch what happens. So look how convenient this is. I'm going to open up a bunch of these in, in tabs by hitting Command, click. Okay? I've opened up a bunch. Command, click. So I can... I can go between them all I want, boom, I can go back and forth, but I still have my original Google search. Let's watch what happens when I use the new window key. File, new window, 
I have to move my windows around each other to click back and forth. So realistically, the only time you'd want it, let's say, let's say I wanted to get five apple pie recipes and on another window, five pecan pie recipes, I can open a new window. But realistically, it's nice to have one window with multiple tabs because you can click across them. And you can have almost an infinite number of tabs, but the more you get, the more stress it puts on your processor. I new like tabs are better than new windows. Because a new tab doesn't take as many resources as a new window. Go ahead, Kath. Does it have history of tabs then? Is that, or maybe history. I guess it doesn't matter if it's tab or So tab. tabs will all, your, everything you've done is in history, but not necessarily by tabs. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, and it's so much easier, it's cleaner, okay? So I'm going to close a bunch of those tabs. And again, that went, we were in, we were in our preferences tabs. And you'll notice in our preferences, what's it tell us right here? Shows you, shows you how, what your keyboard commands are for new tabs. I'll tell you, once you start using, and tab browsing, if you're on a slow internet connection, is wonderful, because how many times do you sit there and wait for a page to load? What I do is, I'll load my first page, and I'll click on the others, and they're loading in the background while I read the information on the first page. And then as each other subsequent one comes up, I go ahead and read that page. When I used to have really, really slow internet, it's the only way I could do it. So they load in the background. Next one is autofill. By default, check yours and tell me if all three things are checked or if only the, if the middle one's not checked. Do you think we should always use new tabs in the I didn't say never. There's, there's times when it's appropriate. Go ahead and click on that. Great. So the center one isn't always on by default, but what this means is when you go to Amazon.com, you want it to remember your information, your password, and all that. That's auto. That's a whole different autofill. That's using info from my contacts card. Here's the trick. State is usually a pull down, right? Yeah. Just hit tab and the letter C, and it'll come up every time. Because it's a pull down and not a spot. It's the web designer, not. So what that is, is remember how we talked about the My Card? That's where it's getting that information on the first one. The second one is it remembers passwords. It won't remember your bank password because they're more secure. Most credit card companies it won't either. Okay? Passwords are going to change in the new operating system, but here's your list of your passwords. And if I say Show Passwords, I have to put in my Apple or my computer's username and there's all the passwords. So Okay, great question. What's always up? So it's saying, hey, Safari wants to use your keychain. Do you want to allow it just this once or always allow it or deny it? So I always say always allow if I want to keep looking at it. And so that let me in there. So there's all my passwords. Okay. Next is security. This is the way you should have your settings. But tell me this: Does anyone have Allow Java enabled? Yeah. Okay. And you? Okay. Java is a programming language. It's a secondary language, and there are some known exploits. So the recommend and, and Apple will Apple will disable Java after a certain amount of time because if it hasn't been updated and you haven't used it, it'll disable it. It's one spot where there's a vulnerability, but not to get into your Mac, just to operate on your computer in this thing. So you can leave it off and that's no problem. But if a, if you go to a site that needs Java, go ahead and let it run, and then it comes back out. There's certain sites I've gone to where it configures things. I have to use that, and then I can turn it back. It'll turn it off later. Privacy. 
This is, if you don't, so cookies. You can tell I like a lot of cookies, or used to. And a website cookie means when you visit a site, how many times have you gone to Amazon and you look at something and then you don't buy it and then later on you go back to the site and it says, well, you know, you just looked at this thing. Uh, you know, it's really, you really want it, don't you? Go on, come on here, come on, buy this thing right here. That's cookies that do that. Actually, with Amazon, it's more because they know you're logged in, but that's how cookies work. Um, I did a search for, it's funny because I did a, to see how much a monthly alarm system monitoring was, and that one keeps going. Yes, thank you. So it continually pops up in my ads and everything else. You know, people are all afraid of cookies, but you're on a Mac. Don't worry. Um, I say block cookies from third parties and advertisers, which allows the website itself to have their cookies in there. You can determine whatever level of security you want, but don't worry, you can't get compromised. The only thing with cookies is they might know where you're going. They might know you went from Amazon to Barnes & Noble to iBooks, things like that. So there are followers that can happen with that. And, you know, frankly, most of the time that's beneficial because if, you go, if you're going looking for something, it might suggest other things that will help you with what you're looking for. So don't think that they're always nefarious. Uh, now here, location services is new. You know how on the iPhone and the I on the iPad, we have GPSs. Well, our Macs have not really GPS, but they can narrow down your location. So what they're saying is if you have an app like Google Maps or something like that that's using your current location, you want it to prompt you all the time. Website tracking. This is one that you could turn on. Tell websites not to track you. Okay. In other words, it blocks that. Not all of them, but it'll do the majority of them. And then I would not really turn off prevent search engine from providing suggestions. And let me show you how that works. If I go to google.com and I start typing um, uh, the photographer's ephemeris, look at that. So it fills in for me suggestions. See, even though I misspelled photographer. So if I want to do something like uh, America's Cup, It starts auto-filling, and what this funny thing is, is these are most recent valid searches. Some other person that's typed in America's Cup, these are their most popular returns that people have clicked on. So it's really good because these suggestions can help you many times. If you don't know a certain spelling, I don't know whether America's Cup needs to be um, uh, have an apostrophe in it or not. So the suggestions are very, very good. Don't worry about them. So notifications. Uh, yeah, I don't just, you shouldn't really have anything in there. That's just, a, that puts in notifications, which are these things right here. Extensions, you probably shouldn't have any. This allows me to play certain videos. But other than that, I it's, it's helper apps, and it kind of bogs things down. And the last one is advanced. Some websites have pretty smaller fonts. You can tell it never use a font smaller than that. We can zoom in if we need to, so I leave that where it is default. Um, let's try to highlight each item on the web page. Okay, don't worry about that because I'm going to show you that in a second. And these should all be done here. And don't worry about develop menu. So, any questions on preferences? There, you know, pretty much you leave them set where they are. Um, so, we're going to go to a web page, and I want everybody to do it. Just go to CNN.com and hit return. I want you to load CNN.com. Let me know if it's not loaded. Great. And 
passes. Luckily, with this few people, we've got great internet today. Yeah. So, now let's think about this a second. So this is, uh, let's look at, let's say the headline here was, uh, such and such a team has a 100-game winning streak. And you knew that a friend of yours was a fan of that team. But the headline is, Chicago Blackhawks has a 30-game winning streak since Sean's a Chicago Blackhawks fan. And let's say I wanted to email this to Sean so he could see the headline. I'm sure he already knew that it was a 30-game winning streak because he would be rubbing it into me all the time. But if I want to email this and I go to share and I hit email this page, And I have the link only. The link is CNN.com, right? Yeah. So, the top the top story was Chicago Blackhawks on a 30 game winning streak, and I go, Sean, isn't this great? Isn't this fantastic? Aren't you happy as can be? And he, two days later, clicks on it at CNN.com. And when he clicks on this in CNN.com, and the lead story says child molester on the loose in Sacramento. Well, you've just said, wow, isn't this great? There could be a little misconstruing of the information there. So, in that case, I want to do like we showed before, where we go to share, email this page, and now I want to share not just the link, but the web page, and if you look, it is a snapshot in time from the time that I sent it. It takes a snapshot of the page and sends Chicago Blackhawks 30 game winning streak. And the best part is all of the links and everything are still clickable. And that little setting is right here, either web page or link only. Okay. Now, if I were to go, let's just pick, uh, here we go, here's one that says, device could change the internet. So the, the main headline page of CNN just has a whole bunch of stuff and it's constantly changing. So if I click, device could change the internet. So. Now, you'll notice it doesn't say just CNN. It's got all of this on it. If I were to email this with the link only, it'd be fine because it's the article itself, not the headline homepage. You understand the difference there? Is that, Is that the only article? Anytime it's got like a bunch of information, it's a link directly to the article. So I can send, I can send it as a link if I want. But what I want to point out here, too, is in Safari, we have this little thing called Reader. Now, look at all this other stuff on this page. I have Merrill Edge. I have Bill Gates, Twitter, blah, blah, 4,000 cards. Splits in half after... What's that? What? What did I miss? Oh, there was actually... I guess there was a slip she had. I saw something earlier, so she's hilarious. Okay, so if I click Reader, look what happens. I don't know. I don't find out that Tina Fey is going. Yeah. <laughs> so when I hit Reader, I get a very clean version of the news article that I'm reading. Okay. If you, um, now the unfortunate thing is, I'll get the pictures, but they, remember this one had a video in exactly. it. It won't show the video. What if you just click the page? Like, you that, you that video? When you send it to someone. Right here? Yeah, I can yes. click on that. No, not that. But if I, um, the Tina Fey? No. You really want to see Tina? No. <laughs> so if I do share. Sean does. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's your so question? Share. Share button oh, I see what you're saying. When I hit email page, and, then and if I say yes. web page. See, the video doesn't get sent to them, but the page does. And when they receive the page, they can click on the video. 
All links are active. So, okay, so on their email. You're not sending the video. Right, but they'll be able to click that button. On you their bet. Email. Okay. All links are active. Okay. Good question. YouTube, Good question. So, back to Reader. In Reader, if I hover my mouse down, you can see I can make the font smaller or make the font bigger. You have to move your cursor down and it shows up. I can email this really clean version of the of the thing. Look at this. Look how clean that is. Okay, gets rid of all the other crap that's on there. Also, you'll notice I can print it from there and it's going to give me a streamlined print of it. And I can hit the X get hide reader. Now, uh, this is really helpful. Watch this for the Oops, didn't want to do that. Their inspiration, a conversation about the early days of the internet. I highlighted it and told it to speak it. I forgot to tell you guys, I was starting to talk about lunch. I have a client who's blind and he can use the iPhone as well as I do. The, the accessibility stuff you saw in that video, the amount of stuff that blind people can do with them are just off the chart. So now I'm done with reader, so I go up to the word reader and click it off. No, no. Articles you can. All right, now let's go back to CNN's homepage and you'll notice Reader is not available. And Reader is not available because we're not in an article. What does it know to read? It's a whole page full of different stuff. So that's important to know. Now, let's go back to this little thing. And what I want to do here is I want to share this to my reading list. My reading list is temporary bookmarks and if I add it to my reading list, watch what happens. So add to reading list. Boom, it went up here. First of all, I can come back to this later on. Give it a second to get loaded here. Well, watch. What's really cool is, if I go to my iOS device, and I go to the iPad, and I go to my reading list, look at the first thing on my reading list on my iPad. The device that could change the world. I tap on that. And on my iPad or my iPhone, I go to the website. It's taking a while to load, but there it is. So it's kind of like a bookmark, but it's very fluid. So reading list is really, really cool. How many times have you sat down, you're reading something on your iPhone, you go, boy, this is really small. I want to read this on my computer. Add it to your reading list. And the cool thing with reading list is when you go to reading list, you can have it show... I don't know why this is really bizarre. Let's go here. Nope, oh, something's up with Safari right now. It's not showing me the reading list on the side. Usually it'll show on the side here. It's we have to do a new window. There it is. And I can choose to have all or unread. See, the device isn't on unread because I already read it on my iPad, right? You can delete them if you want, but they're only links anyway, so they're not a big deal. So all they are is simple leaks, so you can clear them. But the cool thing is, is if you can, it'll, the unread ones will be on your unread list. So I think that's a great feature. All right, so. What about airline tickets? I just want to print. Kayak.com. Oh. Yeah. I just want to print.
Okay, from your iOS device, you can't choose pages, but that's a good point. So let's go to, let's go, in fact, that article might have been, let's see here. So this is pretty long, right? Blah, blah, with all these comments and everything. So I'm going to go to print. And in my print window, here's how it, yours is, comes with this little itty bitty window like this. Shoot. Select show details first, right down here. And now it's an expanded window. This is the way we used to have it. Once you hit show details one time, it will always come up that way in every application. And now in this one, you sit here and you click through and you go, well, yeah, the article is really only the first two pages. So I say print one, two, two. And now you can preview it back here and see, wow, that's all I need right there. And you hit print. And if your print, if your printer does two-sided printing, you can select two-sided so it prints front and back. Is that new? The, yeah. Uh, no. Wait. You got the brother, right? The brother, the old one. But was that the four? Th was it sixty bucks? No. Did I say it can print on DVDs? I did not. Okay. Did you say DW at the end, or did it was the? Yeah. If it says DW, it prints on duplex both sides. But paper's cheap. Usually the airline ticket is a half a word. And it's yeah. And yeah. Just... And actually, well, what airline do you normally fly? So United, you use your iPhone. My husband. And your ticket foes shows up on there. Right. Okay. I think Southwest will go with that soon. Okay. And TSA will accept it. But yeah, I just, like on Southwest, I usually it just prints out one page on the email confirmation. You can usually get it on one. Too bad they're not on it's not an article because there are really a lot of images, um, and that's that's usually in mail. Are you printing it from Safari? Or are you printing it from the mail confirmation? Yeah, I would print from the mail rather than that. Okay, so ah, killer tip. So here's a long article, right? And there's a word that's, let's say I'm going to, I, I want to search on this page. Let's say it's a five-page article, and you want to search for a specific word. Watch this. I saw the word uh, software in there. So let's go up here, and I'm going to type software. And if you'll notice, down here, here's all the Google search, right? Here's searching through all my bookmarks, and look down here. Software, nine matches on this page. So when I click that, look what happens. This little bar comes up. I have arrows. And every time I click on an arrow, it takes me to where the word software is in this article. Come on. That wasn't cool? A long article, and you have a friend that they're writing about, and you want to go find where their name is in the long article. Let's go back over that. This, to me, is, is a huge benefit when you're looking for stuff. So I just go, I'm in an article, so I'll go to, well, we'll go to Internet. Internet. I can search the Internet. I can look at my bookmarks. But right here, find Internet on this page. So I click Internet on the page I'm viewing, and right here I have a arrow, and I click the right arrow, and it takes me to the first iteration of it, and you'll notice it made it bright yellow, like a highlighter. If I want to see the next version, it's right there. If I want to go there, boom. Everywhere the word Internet shows up, it shows me. Someday you're going to use that and go, oh, God, that's right. That's great. Because it's pretty cool. All right. So we're going to flip over to iOS. Oh, I should say one thing, too. When you do a Google search, Google's gotten pretty good about this. But if you want to put... It used to be if you put in rusty nail... Oops. Rusty nail. See, it came up with that stuff. 
at some point it looks for rusty and looks for nail. But it's, see, it's doing it now. You used to have to put quotation marks around it. But actually, let's say, here's a, here's a cool Google search feature. Let's say I want to search Apple colon, oops, Apple colon iPod. You'll notice, oh, except for down there, the first two results are at Apple. Okay, so it's it's you're seeding. By the way, this search right here is a paid for search. Obviously, Samsung is trying to pay to get you to not buy Apple iPods, and these are paid searches over here. The yellow and here, these are not paid searches. Okay. So now let's switch to the iOS device, and we're going to go to Safari on the iPad. It's virtually the same on the iPhone. So first, we're going to go to Settings, the Gray Gear Settings on your iPad. And on the left side, scroll down to Safari. Let me know if you're not there. How about you people in the back? You got it? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, go to Safari. Go to Safari. You need Safari? Okay. So remember in, in the app for the Mac, we were able to change it to Bing or Yahoo. We can do the same thing here with our search engine. Passwords and autofill. Okay. When I tap that, same thing as before. Use contact info, my info. Do I want to store and save passwords? Now, this is important. This part is, is a good setting here. So names and passwords. Yes, I want it to remember names and passwords. That's very easy. Remember, your device is probably locked. In saved passwords, you know what? Aha! I lied earlier, and I was here last night, and I didn't see this. You can get into your keychain on your iOS device. Yeah. For Safari. Only for Safari. So see this? Saved passwords? Yeah, I, have I know. Okay. You probably don't save them. Yeah, so you, just, you may not have any yet. But so I'm pretty active, so let's. And I'm not afraid to show because I don't go anywhere where I shouldn't. So here's a bunch of saved passwords. Okay, so my iPad has a um, passcode on it. So let's go to oh, Joe's New Balance. If I tap that, screen comes up. <laughs> Excuse me. And I'm going to enter in my passcode. And there is my Joe's New Balance information. This is that first step to this whole keychain in the cloud. This wasn't there before. So it's the same as keychain in the other. It's protected by having a password on your device. And I'm, there is something about you may not be able to save passwords. Do you have a lock screen on yours? It does have a code okay good I don't know that it'll let you save without the last one is always allow and I had I kept that off but I want to let it use it so I'm turning always allow on now the next part is new we talked earlier about how at restaurants you don't like to give your credit card away and they can go around different things like that well Other than Amazon and a few others, I don't let them store my credit card because I'm concerned about them getting hacked into. I know it's not a problem with Apple. I know it's not a problem with Amazon. They're big enough that they have the kind of security that that's not going to happen. But you don't want to have to enter your credit card every time you go to a new site or something like that. And really, you don't want that transmitted over the Internet for somebody to see. So with credit cards... You can turn it on, 
and then you hit there and you can add I actually have done it on my phone but I haven't done it here you add your credit card information it is stored inside your device and when you go to a site that wants your credit card you can simply say use this credit card and it goes in I think it's fine because your 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 iOS device is locked and you can disable it. You'll find out tomorrow a little bit more about that in the iOS class. But let me see here. I think I have a saved one in on my iPhone. Uh, wow. Oh, there it is. Passwords and autofill. And I've put my credit... Oh, I, oh they must have... I redid my phone on a software update, so I don't have it in there. But anyway, the beauty of that is when we get our passwords all up on the cloud, our, our credit card will be up there, too, and can go between our devices. But believe me, it's very trusted and very locked down. So you enter your credit card once, you'll be able to show it on your other devices. But it stays on your device in a very secure part of your device. Yeah, so passwords and autofill on there. I believe to save your credit card, it requires you to at least have a passcode on. But afterwards, you can disable your passcode. Well, you said you had a passcode on. All right, so that's... So farther down in Safari is, this is an interesting one, do not track. Remember we talked about don't let the web websites follow you where you go. Oh, actually, I take that back. Go up here. Um, show favorites bar, open tabs in background, and block pop-ups should all be checked. Did I get to the... Oh, it's because the credit cards were in the autofill. That's why. Down here, do not track. Block cookies. And smart search field, that's that autofill. Like we talked about on the Google, remember when we typed in um, um, America's Cap at Build? That's what that search engine suggestions are. So those should be on. Fraudulent website warning should be on now. Here is clear history. If you don't want someone to see where you've been, you hit clear history and it clears out all your history. Clear cookies and data wouldn't clear your whole history, but it'll clear your cookies and data. And the reading list thing, uh, I don't have cellular on this, but normally you would let it do it on cellular data. And the other thing is, where's private browsing? Let me see here. Oh, that's under... Security, I believe. Bear with me one sec. Okay, so that's our preferences in there. I'm going to look up that uh, private browsing, which basically makes it so it doesn't follow you at all when you're when you're going to sites. Ah, all right, let's look this uh, iOS seven private private browsing. I never use this so. So what I'm going to do here, this is a perfect example, I'm going to search this page for private. And there it is. Easy to find private browsing. That wasn't very helpful.
Last year. You know, I'll have to look for that. It's supposed to, it, it used to be right on this screen here, so I'm sorry. I don't, what, iOS 7 is two weeks old? All right. Um, let's field any questions with Safari before we move on to notes and reminders. Everything crystal clear on that? Seems to be different. Well, let's pull. Let's pull them up on both. Oh, okay. So these icons at the bottom here. You're talking. Oops. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, those there. Talking about these. Is that what you're talking about on your iPhone? These. Exactly. So let me go a page forward. Uh, okay, so we're going to look at the iPhone first. And these little icons are there, but watch what happens when I scroll my page. If I start scrolling down, they. Oh, that's a page that I can't scroll down to. Hang on. Uh, let's go to CNN again. Yeah, whatever. So when I scroll down on this page, look at what happens. These and up here disappear. The idea is, is it gets out of the way for you to have more stuff. But to get them back, I have to scroll my screen down. I'm going to go, and now they show up again. I'm on Dropbox.com. That's fine. What is that arrow? This arrow? That's the refresh. That just means reload that page. Okay. Yeah. How do you do a new page yeah. or a new tab? Or go to somewhere else? Go somewhere else. Okay, no, that's fine. So, do you have these icons down here? Okay. And you have this up here? Tap where it says Dropbox at the top. And your keyboard should come up. And now just type where you want to go. Uh, you know, I don't think they do now. They did. They screwed this. No, because it's highlighted. See how it's highlighted? Yeah. yeah. Just start typing. And how I get to my menu bar? What menu bar? Like your bookmarks and stuff? Okay. So go back. Go to the page you're going to go to or whatever. We'll go to go. Now, down here, this is your back arrow. This is your, let's tap it. This is message. Remember how we want to email a link or whatever? All of that. Hit cancel. And the next one is your bookmarks. That's this. Is that what you're looking for? Now, bookmarks. Reading list, and believe it or not, this is a Twitter feed. This is brand new. That's current Twitter information. So no shared links on Twitter. I didn't. I haven't sent any links to Twitter. Ah, here's the private browsing. If you want to do private browsing, you click on that. I knew I'd seen it. So just hit done in the upper right. Private browsing. In other words, nothing tracks you, nothing follows you, no cookies, and of course, no web, web history either. It's, it's as secure and safe as you can get. The last one right here is really cool. Remember how we did tabs before on the Mac? I'll do this on both of them. On the iPhone first, there's my tabs, and look at this now. I've got my history right through here. I can... Go through the pages. That's on the iPhone. I hit here in the lower right, right here. So you notice it looks like nested pages. Just click that, it comes up. Now, let's look at the iPad to see the same things. There's our left and right back arrow. There's our action arrow that does all kinds of things like message, 
mail, Twitter, post to Facebook, and you notice this slides back and forth. Print, bookmarks, add to reading list, add to home screen, etc. Airdrop. You could send the link to somebody if they're on the same Wi-Fi network. If we go over here to our bookmarks, it looks exactly the same. Okay. The next one is the cloud. That's our cloud bookmarks. Cloud tabs. And you see this? These are all the tabs that are open there. But what's different is, if I look at my iPhone, these are my different pages that I have open in tabs, right? They're kind of like pages instead of tabs. If we look at my iPad, I have tabs across the top here. I can tap on any of those tabs and it reloads. Okay, so how do I get those tabs up there? For instance, here is, here's a little article. Well, let's do a Google search for, to be consistent. Google.com, right? So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to say apple pie recipe. Except, sorry, apple pie recipe. So there's my Google search page of apple pie recipe stuff, right? Now watch what happens. Hang on, i got to get rid of one thing here. So here's my apple pie recipe page. Remember we command clicked to open a new tab? If I press and hold on a tab, if I press and hold, I get open the page, open a new tab, add the reading list or copy. If I open it in a new tab, it just opens a new tab. I had to press and hold on the link itself. Okay, same thing works on your iPhone. The press and hold has a lot of different things you can do on the iOS devices. Oh, on the link, not the title. No, you have to. Well, the top part is the 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 title is actually the link. The the green underneath is not the link. It's just showing you where it is. The the Big title up top. This is the link. This just shows you what the link is. You're really tapping on the blue. See, watch my finger when I do this. Watch apple pie recipe. Oop. I'm going to press on right here. I'm going to press right there. When I press and hold, it turns gray, and then it brings up that screen. Okay, so that Safari syncing bookmarks, find text on page. Oh, all right. I haven't I, I haven't done this to either of you guys, but let me show you this. So people always call me up and leave this long three-minute message on how to do something. Well, they could have Googled it. So let's say, how do I make an album in iPhoto? Okay, so I could type. How, how do I make an album in iPhoto? Okay. So they could, they could Google that just as easy as I could, right? So I'm going to go to this website, and it's called Let Me Google That For You. Okay. L-M-G-T-F-Y. Let me Google that for you. So hopefully people get the joke when they see me reply with this because I'll go there and I'm going to say, okay, here's what you type in. Okay? And then watch. Here's a link it made, right? So when I send them this email back, it'll say,
In other words, the joke is there, you could have Googled it yourself. So it shows them how to type what they asked in Google, and it comes up. So let me Google that for you. It's, you know, you can, some people just, I don't know. Google's the first place to go. Let me Google that for you, or L-M-G-T-F-Y. All right. So we're going to go to notes and reminders. Now, first, I want everybody to open up their Mac and go to settings and go to mail contacts and calendars. Notes is really cool because you can make shopping lists and things. So let's see if you have notes on it. Notes there and see if they go on. No, because you're going to be off here. So say merge. Oh, no. Oh, you want to do it. Notes are on Oh, well, you, yeah. Okay, so hang on. I don't really keep notes on. So, oh, you do the notes right there. There's notes on it. So let's see if you do it. Ah, so you don't want to unlock it. So if you go through it, see you're only going to do it. You want to change it so you have the default would be go forward. So you have notes on your Gmail, which is your Yeah, because you want all the 
but it won't get rid of any of the notes I have. But now any notes you make will be completely from the Yeah, it'll sync completely because you kind of have one and one and one on the other. Yeah. It won't delete any of the ones you have. All right. So everybody should have notes open on all of their devices. And we're going to test to make sure the syncings work. So go to notes. And I'll done. Launch notes. Why is she not going through the Oh, I see the read. Okay. There we go. Okay, so it's Notes Mania here. So let's start on our Mac in Notes. And if you look on the screen, Right down here is a plus sign. Hit the plus sign. The first line of your note is always the title of your note. So we'll say class notes. Okay? Then hit return. Now, if we go to our iOS devices, and we go to, there, look at class notes should be showing up. It automatically filled in on my other devices. So I want to make sure it does on your guys. Okay. And then let's go to, go to notes on, on your iPad. Launch notes. No, Uh, there's class notes below it. Oh, we started to make one by mistake, so we can just hit class notes. Okay, so the first part is a title. So if we look at my computer, we can see everything here. We have my notes, my iPhone, and my iPad. The beauty of notes is this. add widgets and toothpaste to my class notes note. Sorry. Yeah. I screwed up on calling it class notes. You guys aren't going to, well, so let's do this. Uh, I'm going to call it test. So I've changed it to test. Add toothpaste to my test note. Which note? Ah. Test or mail safari contacts. Test. Which note? Test yeah. or. Okay, I made the change to your note. Okay, let me fix my mail safari uh, contacts note. Why is where is test in here? So we're going to change my note to um, 
Costco is kind of tough. We'll see if she picks it up. She does. It doesn't do Costco too well. So, all right. Add laundry detergent to my Costco note. Which note? Costco. Oh, I have two Costcos. Costco. Hang on. Let's get rid of this Costco note. I. Add lawnmower detergent to my Costco note. Okay, I made the change to your note. One more detergent. Oh, so. So Siri makes this really, really nice because I can go and make a shopping list. And as I go there with my eye, I can make it on my Mac or my iPad, and when I go there, I can oh, I've got that, so you delete it. And, and I keep a note called Costco, or I keep a Walmart note, or I keep a, uh, um, a, a, like a Home Depot note, different things like that. And I keep the note in there, and I say, but she can create a new note. So I can go with Siri and say, create a new note called Paper Plates. No, so she created a new mint note called Paper Plates. You have it on your mini. You'll have Siri, you have Siri on your phone. So Siri and Notes is really good. But the best part is, is look at this interactivity between all your devices. And it's seamlessly syncing. And I, I, that's huge. So Notes is really just that. It's, it's a pad to write a bunch of paper on. So there's not, we've got you guys set up for notes. That was the beauty of only having a few people. We could go through all the setup and everything, but you're already set up. Don't worry, it works. It is matriculating or, or propagating to all your devices, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. One step beyond that is reminders. Double, Double notes. Yeah. Well, because you have an all notes and on my Mac, I'll look at that. Uh, you know, there's too many people to do everyone, so I'll do that during the break. No, I think it's because you have some, because I told it not to merge. We can clean it up, but I didn't want to delete what you had right there since you're doing so many notes, so we can fix that. No, no, it's displaying no. it twice because it's in two different ones, so any new notes, it won't. Okay, that's fine. So, in fact, try doing new note and see. But the main thing is, is I want it, the important thing is, is we wanted to make sure that you're creating the note in the same account that the other devices are using. Otherwise, you keep you have to switching back and forth. So what will happen is from this day forward, everything that's on your iCloud Notes account will go to your, will be correct. And we don't, we can, we can bring those others over or do whatever, but at least from this day forward, you're going to be in sync. Sure. Uh-huh. You Internet's ubiquitous. It doesn't know where you are. It may not send it out if you're not at your home internet connection. Is the only thing. You should, they should both work. Okay. So we're going to take a break here in five minutes, or we can take it now. But have we got notes down? Yeah. And we got Safari pretty well. So, go ahead. It can go in and out. See the tray here? You can move it in and out. That's all that is. But I don't remember them flipping. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so here's the deal. If you look on my screen, Apple's getting away from this thing called skeuomorphism. What skeuomorphism is, is in the olden days, three weeks ago, this is what a notepad looked like. You did a new note, it would flip up, etc., like that. Well, I thought it was pretty cool, but the problem is, it's been that way since the beginning. 
and it's starting to look a little dated. So iOS 7 did what they call flattened everything. <coughs> and that's why this is less frills, more, less filigree around the sides, because it's not needed. I mean, if you'll notice, you've got a torn, <coughs> torn edge like there. Uh, remember calendar? Let's look at calendar. It used to be this way on iOS. It's got a leather thing on the top. Oh, actually, it's got the same tear thing. Okay. But Apple's getting away from that skeuomorphism. And I think I'm either way on it. I think it's kind of neat. It looks a little dated, but they needed to change. One thing I really did like was really neat. In the podcast app, when it was playing a podcast, it looked like a reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. And the reels would spin, and the speed would be would be commensurate with how much tape was on the spool, how much time you had left. And it would have the little thing that bounces when you hit play or fast forward or whatever. It looked like just like an old reel to reel. And that was pretty cool. And it got out of the way, but you know, they've they've gotten away from skeuomorphism and you know, nothing we can do about it. But you you can see the difference. And I'm sure Mavericks I'm trying to think if I saw previews of Mavericks. Mavericks is also the same way. Gets rid of the skeuomorphism is what it's called. All right, let's uh, take a quick break. You guys need to go to the restroom or anything. We'll just wait till you guys get back. I'll leave the recording going. It'll just make it easier. Now let's look at your double notes. Well, the deal is... Here is you had two accounts here, and anything you were making before this was in your Gmail. Yeah. And so that's what it said goes up here. So it's now, even though it's your Gmail address, it's your Apple ID Gmail address, and it's using iCloud. So these are in, and you don't have a ton of them. No. So what we can do is, well, first off, the big notes you're working on. So all notes. See, on my iPad, these only exist here. They don't go in my notes. Unless we move them over. And so the thing is, is I'm going to look to see if they move over. What is that called? Uh, no, it's the... Uh, so it's... And then we'll be able to use the toolbar and the view. So let's look back here and see what it says. I want to be able to use an older one. Even older one. So, yeah, these are also very almost. So the iCloud has, has all of these. Up to a certain point. So what we would do in this case is select, select all, copy, and let's put it on the back and then we know. Now it might be duplicated if we go to all my notes. See how uh, let's see how it's duplicated on all my notes. But we now have it on the cloud, so see if it showed up here, there it is. Make sure it showed up here. So I'm going to delete that one from my from my on my iPad because on my iPad just is here. It doesn't really need it. So good. Um, oh, that one will only be one. Is it right. one here? So what I'm going to do is when I get it out of this account, it will be. Let's see, it's two of them. Thank you. 
Oh, we're doing the cancer? Oh, that's because of this marriage thing. Yeah, so you can go through it. I think I need to go through it. So they're duplicated here, but they're on the cloud. So you can note the cloud thing is high cloud. You don't have the high cloud. So everything new is going to go to the The problem was if you started off with a genome of one of these with notes, and so it's going to have to say. So basically, they're all in your iCloud account, so you mm -hmm. should be able to read the duplicates in here and be concerned about it, it doesn't show up the duplicates in any of the places. So those you're going to need, they're only existing on the phone. If you want those, you need to go over and move them to iCloud. Okay. The Gmail ones, you got a whole bunch here. Those might be not here. You know, they're there, but they're not sinking. And frankly, I think the cloud is a little bit So here's all your notes. Here's your iCloud. So this is exactly what you need to Some of these weren't there anyway because we didn't disable them. These on my iPhone probably don't exist here. Okay. Diane and whatever from 2013. And these Gmail ones probably don't exist there. They might be part of the So going forward, any new notes will be there. So if you're really concerned here on your phone, just say all notes and you have everything. It's, oh, okay. it's everything here. But from here, anything you do from here forward will be on all of them. So I'd that on all I would because yeah. you want to go back to some right. of these, and I don't see what we did here is we only had a few to put out. Mm -hmm. We don't have any on my iPad and we don't have any on Gmail. So I'm just leaving it off iCloud. So is there, is there, so there's a Gmail account. If I go through all those old ones, if you go through those, you either delete them or send them, then you can delete the account. The well, actually, if you're, if, you're rid, if you're rid of them, we can delete that account. But yeah, just go through and just do it. On my and the three you want to keep, send them over. And then on my iPhone, only exists here. So if you want them somewhere else, you copy them to there. Right. Or just delete it from here, and right. then it won't show up anymore. Oh, that won't show up. And Once not, you get them all out of there, right. it'll be an option. And the Gmail. Yeah, and I've set it so your Gmail, your default note to account. Is now iCloud. Is iCloud. Yeah. And then when you're all done, you can turn it off. See, so it's on here on notes. Even though that's Gmail, that's your ID. And on this one, you would turn it off here. That's your and then it wouldn't even show up as an option. But that, going forward, you're set. So I want to always make sure we can see the cross here. Type something. Let's take it in the problem. Look, look, look. Okay, see what goes to the That new note we made a long time ago. The date is when we first, edit, not when we first make it, the last time we edited. So that's another point, Kathy, by the way. I saw, yeah. Always the, the most current thing you're using goes to the top. Yeah. So if you want something on the top, go put a space or a return it. or something to force it to the top. Yeah, because all the recorded you can't send something to Yeah, because that would copy it over. Because we just copied it. 
So anything you want moved up above it, just add something to it. So seven is moved. So the class notes was working. The class notes there and showed up on the phone too. Notes. Yeah, that's up there. You're in sync. So, you know, you know, well, it's up to you. Like, you know, with Gmail, I like to see people with my group to start using Gmail. I mean, you don't have to get rid of your old one, but if you start sending mail from your Gmail, people are used to that in your email address. And again, what happens if somebody comes along and offers you a great email exchange for the best price? You can switch to them and not care about it. You had said that before you moved, though, didn't you? You yeah, kept it. Yeah, because yeah, you had Frontier, so it's open. But see, if you, if you moved across the river, you would have had so many minutes, and you would have lost that email. That's why I say you don't want to be, you don't want to have, be a slave to your internet provider. Does that make sense? Yeah. But that's not, you're not using AT&T today. That's just your service, okay? Yeah. So, so, okay, so there's a difference. So, let's say Comcast, for instance. You have, I have Comcast on the internet, but I never use them yet. The whole idea is they're, they provide email if I want it, and most of the customers do, but it's better to use one that's not type of like Sitman. Let's say you have moved and it was no longer Sitman, you have to get into the you have moved your Sitman, Sitman, or Sitman. Sitman, you would lose that email address when you got in. So that's why I said you know, just migrate to Gmail because I have a better Spanish record. But you don't have to stop doing anything. But what happens is if at some date you decide to leave and you only have 30 days to change everything over, well, if everybody has your new email address, you're good. All right. Reminders kicks butt. Go ahead, Kathy. You had a so question. This is where I can turn notes off once I've gone to on my Gmail. Once you've deleted. Once you've made sure that everything in the Gmail account is okay, then you go there and turn it off, yeah. and it'll say, do you want to merge or delete? I think you can just say delete at that point. All right. 
I did notes before reminders because it's really a precursor. So I'm going to go to reminders on the Mac first, and I'm going to show a couple of things, and then we're going to walk through how to do it because I think that's the easiest way. So I'll go ahead and quit notes. Now, let's think about it a second. We're going from this little pad, this legal pad. That's also where we would put to-do notes. And most reminders are really that, just a to-do list. So we can just make a list, kind of like notes, but the cool thing is when we make a list for reminders, there's some gratification that happens when you check off something that's on your list. When it's a shopping list, there's not a lot of gratification. You just delete what it is you already got. You, in fact, could make a shopping list like this, but it's pretty much easier to do in notes. But So we make a regular list. But sometimes we have reminders that are time sensitive. So if I, let's say, I want to say, at 3 o'clock today, remind me to call the dentist to make an appointment. So the reminder would be at 3 o'clock, not for when the appointment is, because once I get the appointment, I'll put it in my calendar. But I could also say, once I make the dentist appointment, remind me at 2.30 next Tuesday, I have a dentist appointment at 4 p.m. So a reminder is time-based, if it wants to be. So our original reminder is just a list. Second reminder is time-based. The coolest reminder is location-based. So. Let's think about this for a second. I'm out and about, and I didn't put the trash cans out this morning. Oh my gosh. When I get home, remind me to take the trash cans out. Or remind me to, sh to throw, it's trash night, remind me to take the fish out of the fridge and put it in the trash can. When I get home, right? So our iPhone has a GPS in it, so it'll tell me when we get home. The other thing is, is let's say you're in a meeting or in the middle of something, and you get this idea. Oh, man, when I leave here, I completely forgot. I need to call the vet to get the medication for my animal. And you don't want to, you're in a meeting, you don't want to interrupt it, so you just do a reminder and it says, hey, when I leave here, remind me to call the vet. So those are our three types of reminders. And we're going to do them manually first, and then I'm going to show you, and you guys both have Siri. So that'll work. So in the reminders on your screen, and I'll do this first, and then we'll have you do it. Believe it or not, you're going to see. It's going to take me 15 minutes to show you how to do it on the computer. And it's going to take three minutes to show you how to do it on Siri. Siri is the future. Mm -hmm. So I have a little plus sign. Let's let's hide everything else. Hang on. Reminders, hide others. OK. So the reminder screen is like this. Forget that I have a whole bunch of reminders here. Let's see. I probably have. I'll just go to my Home Depot reminder. There, that's empty. So. You'll see a little plus down here, all right? In fact, you guys can walk along with this. This will be good. Let's do it together. If I hit the plus sign, does it say, where do you want to make the reminder? You know what? I have to check your guys' reminders accounts, too. So let me come around, and let's check your reminders accounts. So unlock your phones. It'll probably be on your iCloud account. Notes was a little specific because certain uh, certain accounts, certain email accounts don't allow notes. Reminders, the default list is reminders on iCloud. Good, good. iCloud, reminders is on. Have you used reminders?
accounts. Um, kind of the same thing, we don't want to have a duplicate account. So let's go here. Set. So it's kind of the same thing with accounts. Get to make sure none of them other than the file. Right. So Gmail has many kinds of emails. Okay, now, you, now hold on. Account. Now in Gmail, do you use the Gmail calendar or do you use the Apple? I would use the Apple calendar. Great. So let's go in. Calendar. But wait a minute, we have some in mind with that. It's it's different. So you don't care about them? So. so if we purge them, we purge them? Launch reminders. Oops. Oh, you can take it from there. Well, I get in my phone. That's fine. Well, I'm not sure if I'll lose it. I just want to do it. It's fine. It's fine. So, Gmail. Oh, it's even the same. Calendar we won't change. Calendar is its own deal. So. I hardly use calendar. I'll well, start using it. Well, now with Siri, it makes it seem easier. Right. So then let's look at the default calendar. Not on my iPhone. Oh, my God. Let's set that. Going to our calendar on that. Okay, it's going to be here, that's good. Go up to the preferences, calendar, preferences. Default calendar. Oh, good account. Default calendar is home, home. home. I just changed the home home. today. Okay, so now all your calendars and your reminders are good to go. Yeah, this one is fine because it was already in the home. This one had an online. So that goes back to the old ones. All right. Perfect. So everything will sync now, theoretically. But I want to show you how to do a reminder first manually because then when you go to do it with Siri, you'll think it through. So, if you go to your computer first, oh, and I had too many accounts. So, click the plus button, and then it comes up and says new list, right? Tell me if it doesn't. Okay, how about you in the back? Okay, good. Did it say new list when you hit the plus in the lower left? Oh, the lower. I was hitting the plus, sorry. Yep. yep. 
So it's highlighted, so you can name it whatever you want. Let's call it class test. Okay? Now this is a list. This isn't actually the reminder. Because like with notes, remember we built the note, and then we had all the dialogue below the note. All right? So does it say class test, hit return or enter? Okay? Now, make sure it's still highlighted. Yeah, it does. Well, oh, you put class test there. No, no, click on new list. Go over. Yeah, click where new list is and hit delete. No, on the left side there. So hit the plus sign down below and start typing class test. Class test. Now just try to class test. Don't click on anything because it's already highlighted. Mm -hmm. So class test is the name of this list. And remember, you can have certain lists. You could have a work list, a home list, a chores around the house list, a list I really, of things I really don't want to do but I have to do, something like that. So we have a class test. Now, go over into the right-hand side in this blank area and click there. Do you get a little box and a flashing cursor like this? Yes? Mm -hmm. Eleanor, you're being way too loud. Mm -hmm. you got to just be quieter. <laughs> okay. So now this would be the task that we're talking about. Let's say clean the drapes. Okay. And that's it. Now we're going to hit return, and we've got another list. Let's say, uh, wash the deck and hit return. Okay. So we have two different things here. Uh, the next one is uh, schedule haircut. Just had one yesterday. So that's off my list. All right. So now, let's go back, clean the drapes. Well, that's kind of whenever, isn't it? So you really don't care about the date. Let's go to the next one that says wash the deck. And you'll notice when you hover over, there's a little I in the right-hand side. Click on the I. Let me know if you don't get that up. So you want to, let's say we're out and about today, and you know that the bunch of leaves just fell. So you want to remind you to wash the deck at 4 o'clock today, okay? So I click on, on a day. Oh, and look at that. It came up as 4 o'clock. So go ahead and click on a day. Click the I, click on a day. You can say 4 o'clock. Great. No, that's just because the next one up. Well, it's, oh, because you clicked the box. Don't click the box. So I'll show you that in a minute. So clean the drapes. we got to go over here to the eye over here. And on a day. So let's hit done. All right? Go ahead and hit the done in that box. What's it say? Yeah, we're not going to do location on this one. So say OK, allow. All right. So that means that when you got to remit, you want a reminder at 4 o'clock. It's not that you have to wash the deck at 4 o'clock. It's you're getting a reminder at 4 o'clock. So let's go to the next one and say schedule a haircut. Well, I have, the, I have the phone number for the supercuts by my house at home, let's say. So I'm going to click on the I by supercut. 
and I'm going to say add a location. And when I arrive, see leaving and it fills in your current location, it knows where you are. Or I can say when I arrive, and if I start typing home, H-O-M-E, look at that. It goes into my address book and finds home. And I hit done. So right here is not in my address book, but home is. I'll say, OK, yeah, allow it to use your location. And that's good, hit done. You may have your old home and your new home in there, you know, it's good. So the best part about this is when I'm on my iPhone and I get within about 300 feet of my house, it'll pop up and say, schedule haircut. Obviously, that wouldn't be appropriate. But think about it this way. Let's say, like, I used to, when I left my house for the empowerment meetings, I used to have to go, we used to have a screen I'd pick up at La Placida. And I'd say, when I leave here, remind me to pick up the screen. Or I actually did it in the morning at a certain time, and it would pop up. If I say, call so-and-so, and they're in my address book, it'll pop up and say, remember to call so-and-so. And then it'll have their number, and it says, do you want me to call? And it'll say, call. It's amazing. And I'm, I'm stalling because we're all about ready to get a reminder on all, all of our devices here in a second. We're going to get a reminder to wash the deck. Da, 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 da. Anyway, the, it's called geolocation. And it means it's a geofence I have around me at all times. And... I can leave a location and activate it, or I could say, when I get to Home Depot, remind me to get 16 penny nails. Unfortunately, though, Home Depot needs to be in my address book for that to happen. So if it's a place you travel a lot and you want to be remembered of something when you get there, you can put it in your address book. I'll, in a second here, once we get the reminder, I'll give you a funny, a funny thing that happened to me with location-based Actually, Sean and I both, we were heading to San Jose. Oh, everybody getting to reminders. Look at this. Did it pop up on all your devices? Yeah. Gosh, that's the work clock. You've got to remember to wash your deck. Actually, though, what does now, if you, if you delete it on one, it's delete on one, or not delete it. Okay, so wash the deck popped up. So what I want to do is I want to go over here. I don't want it to remind me anymore. So you see the little checkbox to the left of wash the deck? If I check it, it's gone, and it goes into my completed tasks, OK? That's it. That's your other wash the deck reminder coming in. Sounds like the crickets are under the deck. Maybe, maybe they need water if you wash the deck. Yeah. Remember our clean the drapes? Well, you know what I'm going to do there? I don't want to do it as a check mark. I'm going to go over here, and I'm just going to simply delete it. So we still have schedule a haircut, right? So you click on it and delete it. But now let's switch to our iOS devices and watch how cool it is. Um... Launch reminders. Launch reminders. Okay. So there's my two reminders apps on my iOS. Now, since the iPhone's a little easier for me to pick up, and theoretically, it's supposed to go through that. Why isn't it? Going through. Oh, it goes to sleep. Okay. So I'm going to say, what was that? Oh, ah. Tonight at 9 p.m., remind me to get the checkbook out for Jeremy. 
to remember the bringing time. For today at 9 p.m. Shall I create it? Yes, confirm. Okay, I'll remind you. So I just made it made a new time-based reminder. Okay. But it's not in my class test. It's actually in my work one, I hope. Or maybe it's my Home Depot one. Class go, class test. There it is, the bottom. Get the checkbook out for Jeremy. Oh, I invoiced Margie. I can do that. I called Mindy Richardson. So I have a couple things on here. Well, let's talk about locations. No, it works by default. So it does it by work unless I tell it to go on a list. Yours is home. Okay, so now I was heading to San Jose one day. And I saw this great billboard on the side, really good looking. It said, Royce Farms Barbecue. And I thought, wow, this is the morning. When I come back, I'll check it out on the way home. So I said to my phone, I said, when I get here, remind me Royce Farms Barbecue. So I'm heading back, and I'm up 99, and I little thing pings and says, Royce Farms Barbecue. And I turned around to the southbound lane of traffic and I saw the big sign and it said Eight Mile Road. Well, I'd already passed Eight Mile Road. So I said, well, okay, I'll check into it. And I went home and I did Apple Maps, I Google Maps, I checked it out. It got limited reviews. So the key there was though, I was at a location and I said, when I get here, remind me to do something. I have, I do some side work for this thing, for it's, it's actually, I. The DMV has these kiosks where you can do your registration now. Three of the DMVs in Sacramento have it where you can do your registration right from it looks like an ATM machine. And a company hires me like twice a week. I go through and I just refill sometimes their little, the, where the registration forms and stuff are. So I have set up in my reminders, when I get to DMV and Carmichael, I tell it to remind me to check in. I check in on my phone with this little app. And I also have it to remind me to check out. So in other words, as I'm driving up to the DMV, as I get close, it pops up and says, check in. It's location based. And I leave it in my reminders. So every time, in fact, there's times I'll drive by the DMV when I'm not going to call on it. I'll say, check in, check out. <laughs> but it's a great reminder. So if you have something that's persistent like that, you can do that. And that's location based. And reminders from your iPhone is huge. So the key with Siri is say, at 4 p.m., remind, oops, not today, not 4 p.m., excuse me. At 4.10 p.m., remind me to smile at the class. Oops. Oh, I didn't do it on a speaker. You could hear. Sorry. At 4:10 p.m., remind me. Okay, just tell me what you want to be reminded about. Take a bow for the class. Here's your reminder for today at 4:10 p.m. Shall I create it? Yes. Yes. Okay, I'll remind you. So you commented earlier how busy my calendar was. This makes a disorganized person look very organized. And I can do it from my car with my Bluetooth. I can do it from anywhere. And it's great. And I do the same thing with my appointments as we saw earlier. So let's talk about these again, again and put them in context. Can you tell Siri when to remind us? Like on 9.30 at 4 p.m.? So, so let's, okay. So, we're, 
I'm going to ask Siri to remind me. That's the first thing. What are we going to ask her to remind me about? And it would be, yeah, but at 4 p.m., remind me I have a haircut at 9.30 or something like that. So what happens is, is there's the what you wanted to do, which is remind. Right. The context, including if you have a time in that, but also when do you want to be reminded. Not when is the appointment, because that's what goes in your calendar. So, uh, like I just said earlier, I've got to remember, because I ne never carry a checkbook anymore, and they need a checkbook for here, or a check for here. So I told myself, I know, I'll, I, know I should be home by 9. So I said, at 9 o'clock tonight, remind me, pop up, and say, grab your checkbook. And then I'll go grab my checkbook, and I set it where I go out the door to go to my car. Well, to try it. Now, I'm one who always said, if I said next Tuesday, some people think that means Tuesday around. If I say this Tuesday, it means the coming Tuesday. And I don't like that nomenclature, because to me that's wrong. But in fact, let's try it. Let's say... Next Tuesday, remind me. Okay, just tell me what you want to be reminded about. Which Tuesday is this? Question mark. Here's your reminder for October 8, 2013 at 9 a.m. Shall I create it? Cancel. Okay. So, if I say this Tuesday, she'll do it. To the correct one, which is what the second or something. Yes, Tuesday's fine too. But I wanted to point out, no. in my mind, next Tuesday means the next Tuesday on the calendar. It doesn't. For somehow, and I believe, and I've heard people, I've had this, this people tell me this before, and I never looked at it that way. Okay, so. Yeah, or if I just say Tuesday, which Sean, Sean's perfectly correct there, but I, it's important to point that out. Yeah, but. Yeah, oh yeah, you can do that. She'll she'll pick up anything. But remember, she won't okay, so I say in two days remind me to take out the trash. Here's your reminder. Ah. Cancel. Okay then. Oh, instead of take about for the class, I'm supposed to take a bow for the class, remember? Yeah. That was my thing. It pops up. But she'll make it an all-day event if you don't give her a specific time. And it probably pops up in the morning. And then the other thing is you'll notice on my screen, the option comes up and it says either close, which means make it go away, or snooze. And if I hit snooze, it's just like hitting the snooze on your alarm. It'll come up later. Can you say it on Wednesday? Uh-huh. Oh, to snooze? No, no, no. Wednesday would not be Yes. Or you can say a date specific. I mean, she she's incredible. Try it. Play. Okay, you guys, you got to play with it. That's really what you got to do. I I struggled with Siri in the beginning, and, and Siri wasn't as good as she is now. She's great. But it's more about us learning her than her learning us. And you can change it to a male voice if you want to, in iOS 7. But she's also more lifelike. And she says funny things like, what is the meaning of life? All evidence to date suggests it's chocolate. What is the meaning of life? All evidence to date suggests ah, it's chocolate. It said 43. Will you marry me? I'm not the marrying kind, Ken. And you know, if you think about this for a second, if she was a very animatronic voice and really just said, no, or I can't, Apple realizes that for us to embrace technology, we have to feel like we're being embraced by it. And Siri... This inanimate object that's a computer has an attitude. So we're more apt to accept it. 
and mess with it and play with it because it's not this intimidating wall. Nope, you can't do that. And it's kind of like that little thing with the kid with Proloquo. You know, they the iPad is completely unintimidating to them and they can go forward and they can do things. And that's really, with, with Siri, it's it's amazing. You just have to go go forward. So is, if I want to change it to a... Okay, let's show you. So if we go into settings, watch my iPhone up here. So go to settings, or you can do it on your own. General, Siri. You may not have a language choice. I'm sorry, you may not have a gender choice. You do. It's some of the older models that doesn't. And it's a male voice. You used to be able to choose the British or the Australian language. And now she'll give you, now he'll talk to you. We did sit here. What's the third character? What's the third character? He's Don't delete it. <laughs> it's saying that's what if you needed to read the cap, that's what you would do. You want the male voice for Siri if you can? You like the female voice here on the view. Um and, and she's become more lifelike in the last iteration of it. And she's gotten a lot better, but I gotta be honest, I use Siri a lot and I've had more recently less good contact. It's just kind of goes in. It, it, she doesn't connect. And, and here, let's talk about it again. Remember the dictation we did? She's recording what I say, sends it out over the internet to North Carolina, the big supercomputer crunches it, and sends it back to you. I mean, if five years ago, would you look at that and go, nah. Dictation on the Mac the regular dictation, they make one called Drag and Dictate that's built into the Mac. We think in the future, there are, there are indications that if there's enough memory and enough horsepower in the iPhones, that you'll be able to have voice on board. It won't have to connect with them. So, um, since, let's, since you both have Siri, we'll do some Siri things because I think it's vital and I'm only going to be able to touch on it briefly tomorrow because we have so much stuff to cover in iOS 7. So first off go to settings <coughs> and go to Siri, general Siri and you notice you have raised to speak. Is it on or off at the bottom? That should be on your phone. Raise to speak. Go ahead and Raise turn speak. it on for now if you want. And let me explain that. Those of you, you have a white iPhone. You have a black iPhone. Let me borrow your iPhone for a second. First of all, see this there? That's a camera. See that there? That's a proximity sensor. And I'll explain it in a second. That's the camera, but that's the proximity sensor. Okay? So, I don't know if you've ever noticed... But on TV shows, if they're making a call with an iPhone, the screen still stays lit up, right? Well, the proximity sensor is designed so that when it comes in proximity of your ear and you're on a phone call, the screen goes dark. This started in January of 2007 when they first introduced the iPhone. The idea was is that when you're on a phone call, you don't want the screen lit up because it'll waste battery. Secondly, it makes it so none of the buttons are active so your cheek doesn't hit the mute button by mistake. So that proximity sensor realizes this. With Siri, if we're in a crowded building or something, you don't want people to hear that you're asking her for, you know, what should I do if, uh, how do I get out of this date or something like that, right? So you press here and then everybody can hear you speak and then she speaks back to me. So you won't know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I've confused her. That's okay. So if you have raised to speak, 
and I pull it up here. It may not work because I have a headphone jack in there. No, it won't. But if you turn your phone on and bring it up to your ear and say, what's the temperature outside? What's the temperature outside? And wait for it. I love it. I might do that. I like that. So there, I have English Australia and English Canada. Yeah, but then you'll have views in all of your flavor and color. Canadians, English with views. Sorry. That's mm -hmm. just good. Mm -hmm. It's just good. I don't know why you're doing it and I can use it might not see it. But to be honest, I hardly ever use that. But you see how it works. If I wanted to. Okay, well, why don't we use it? It's fine, but you know what happens is I go here, yeah. and then I go to listen to it and go here. But let me tell you, in my car, I have Bluetooth. So, right now, little quirks of Siri is, I'm going to do two things. We talked about mail earlier. So, I'm going to go do an email from my iPad. Oh, wait a minute here. Got to put that in front. Watch my iPad. Send, sh oh. So I'll try and make this so you can hear it. Send Sean Vogwell an email. Which email address for Sean Vogwell? I just tap. I don't know what you mean by it. I just, what's the subject of your email? Just testing Siri. Okay, what would you like the email to say? This is it! Exclamation mark. Here's your message to Sean Vogelwill. So I'll cancel. But you notice I talked to it and she prompted me. Now, I have my iPhone hooked to the speaker, which is the same thing as having the headset or using Bluetooth in your car, and it changes complexion. Watch this. Send Sean Vogelwill an email. Sean Bogwell has no email address. You can use one of these instead. What's the subject of the email? Just testing Siri. What would you like your email to say? You will see that it will read it back to me, comma, because I'm looking at it hands-free, or I should not be looking at it, actually, period. Here's your message to Sean Bogwell. Ready to send it? Oh, cancel. Okay, I will send this. So you know what? It's funny because I have some weird things about getting it on this screen like right. this. But in my car, it will read back to me what I type. When I make appointments, it will read back to me what the appointment is. Because Apple has a thing called the Eyes Free Initiative. And the Eyes Free Initiative is it wants us to be able to keep this in our pocket and not look at the screen. And we'll see if she does this. So, find the nearest sushi restaurant. I found 15 sushi restaurants fairly close to you. I've sorted them by distance. If I do this from my car, she'll start taking me to the first one. But I asked for the nearest sushi restaurant, right? And she sorted them by distance. Now, watch what happens. Find the best sushi restaurant nearby. I found 15 sushi restaurants. 14 of them are fairly close to you. I sorted them by rating. By Yelp rating. Find a Thai restaurant nearby. I found 10 Thai restaurants. Nine of them are oh, fairly close to you. There it is, Cobb Coon. 
So the ratings are the Yelp rating is what it really amounts to. Um, now, I have 500 something apps on my iPhone. I have 200 something apps on my iPad. And I hate having to go find them. I have one that tells me sunrise and sunset and some things like that. So, launch sun GPS. Yeah, but you would have to search anyway. Launch Sol. This is another one. Gives me a reminder an hour before I can set the reminders. Oh, uh, no, um, I can I can launch the apps. I can do anything. I can say, play Elton John songs. Actually, hang on. Let's see who does this. Play. No way. Play songs by Hiroshima. Here's Hiroshima Shuffle. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, we have time. So let me uh, get, turn the music player off. Oban, one, two, five, got it. Okay, so, yeah, because we probably will just do it tomorrow. If you have Siri in your iPhone, phone, it will give you voice-guided turn-by-turn directions. And is that what you're talking about, that kind of maps? I get, you know, I go see different patients, like, for a week I'll see, like, 12 different patients, and I have to... I but don't, do you, don't you repeat them? Yes, I do, but I have to remember, to bring them up, I have to... Maybe if I would... But do you have them in your address book? Okay. So it'll be in your history. Yes, it's in my history of my iMap. Right, of your G Maps or Apple yeah. Maps rather. Apple. So you can make bookmarks too, and then re remove them later. But it's pretty hard. So Siri doesn't do a great job with street names. She doesn't do a great job with common names. The new Siri will learn something if, like I say, surely see me, and she says, surely see me. And you can correct her now. But in your case, you'd almost be better putting them in the notes and then tapping on the notes each time and having it direct you to it. So let's show how to do that. Great. Here's a perfect use scenario. So I'm going to say, give me directions to 2635 Sunrise Boulevard. Giving directions to 2635 Sunrise Boulevard, Rancho Cordova. Remember I hit the snooze earlier? Well, why did you fire up my music? Pause music. Okay, pause. Okay, so here is that on there. But if I go up to, if I tap the screen and hit end, there's the address, right? Okay. So if I tap it and hit tap and hold and hit select all, copy, now let's put it in a note. And I'm going to go to a new note and paste. Return. Uh, might not work. Oh, yeah, it is. Look at that. That's a link. So if I tap that, it takes me right to it. And then later, you just delete that from your note. Yeah, it does keep what I tap. Also, it's like, I'm not sure where you Okay, so yeah, so the, the history like this. So you can go down. It only it only stores so many. Yeah. If you have some place that's common, you can actually bookmark it. First of all, you'll notice home comes up right away, which is really nice. Right. But it, it is by most recent ones, and then you can see if I searched or how I got there. The other really cool thing is I can just say, take me home. 
and it gives you directions to Put it in notes, you put it in email. Starting route to 3444 Nouveau Way. Head northeast on Encino Avenue, then turn left onto Alta Vista Avenue. Okay. So you'll notice they changed things a little bit. I used to toggle my screen, so I always had my ETA and stuff like that. Now you can, now you tap your screen one time, you get all that and the stuff down below. But if you tap the screen, you get a little bit cleaner version. But it shows you it constantly adjusts your arrival time and how long it's going to be to get there. And that's also based on traffic. So make sure you hit end so it doesn't keep going. I've gotten out and going around Home Depot and it says, turn left at the next street. And because it still thinks I'm driving my car somewhere. So. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. So if you're in maps, the little arrow, it's, it's grayed out or it's, it's light. So if I tap it, it zooms in where I am. If I tap it again, it's a compass. See how I spin around? See? It's compass. And obviously when you're doing navigation, it turns with, it's what's called heads up. You're constantly going where you want to be. So while we're at it, and we're going to go over this tomorrow, if you swipe up from the bottom of your phone, if you go right by this button and swipe up, you get this control panel, control center, and you've got a flashlight built in, all kinds of stuff there. We're going to go over that tomorrow because it's a big deal. All right, we still have a little bit more time. Any other weird questions? I'm trying to think. We've got everything. Don't forget, let me Google that for you. That's pretty funny. Uh, oh, uh, back on contacts, I should mention, we never really talked about this. How do you edit? You have to edit down here to adjust it. But notes, you can always type anything you want in notes without having to edit your contact. And everything you put in there is searchable. So you could put uh, macaroni. And if you search for macaroni, everybody that had macaroni in their notes, it would show up. Also, if you want to print envelopes, you can print envelopes quite well from... This is stuff we weren't able to get to because we were short. So, And it, it really it senses your printer and sets it up so you can print envelopes right from contacts. Birthdays and anniversaries. We talked about the me card, sort order. Oh, let's say you're away from your home computer and you want to check your stuff. If you go to iCloud.com now. And you log in. You'll notice that your contacts, your calendars, your notes, reminders all look exactly the same as they do. On and so you could be a you could be at the library. Don't don't forget to log out. But anybody anywhere you are, and you can add groups here. By the way, So you go back here to iCloud, you can check your Apple Mail. You guys are using, not using Apple Mail. You can go to Calendar. Everything's on there. Notes and reminders. Remember all the notes we were doing. There, remember that was that address we just did. So I'll delete that from here and it'll show up on everything else. Reminders and find my iPhone. Do you know how about find my iPhone? 
I think we'll go over that tomorrow because that's huge because it's also a verification lock. So let's see. Make sure I didn't miss anything else. I got something on the second page here. You know, let's go to calendars since that missed. You guys do, if you want to do repeating appointments, uh, like. It's easy to do every month, every week, etc. But like, MacNexus is the first Saturday of every month and the third Tuesday of every month. You can't do this on your iOS device yet, but if we go in here and we make a new appointment, let's say, actually, a quick event, if I just go down here and I say test, and I edit this test, and I say repeat, it's easy to show up and have something repeat every day, every week, every month, every year. But the challenge is, is every month on the same date, that's easy to do, but when it's like a day like this, we say, and it already, it already realizes, hey, you're on the fourth Saturday of the month. Do you want it to have your event be on the fourth Saturday of every month? And you can create that. You cannot do the custom one in the iOS device, but if you create it here, it will show up on your others. And if I create this on the fourth Saturday of every month, and hit done. Now let's say that this one week next month it's going to be on we're going to move it to the Saturday before. If I go to drag it to the Saturday before it says do you want to make all of them now the third Saturday or just this one? And I'll go back here and I'm simply going to delete this one and when I hit delete do you want to delete this or all? That works exactly the same way on the phone and on the iPad, but you can't do the fourth Saturday thing yet. Actually, that'll be a good point. Let's check on, let's look on iCloud calendar. And do a new appointment. Repeat. Ah, you can do custom online. So I have a feeling that's how we're going to be able to do it on the iOS device soon is being able to go in here to Safari. But if you'll notice, there's custom. That's really good. Your iCloud password should be the same as your Apple ID password, hopefully. doesn't have to be, but it should be. Is yours uh, an issue? No, I just said go Your iCloud password is the same as your Apple ID, which hopefully is the same as your iTunes. Okay, so should I hand up the test? <laughs> I'll quit the recording and I'll show you another video quickly. Let me stop the recording.